Yo, what is up, everyone? My name is Terry from NASCAR on MDK. Welcome back to the episode of Inside the Lines. What a Pennzoil 400 it was earlier today at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway, the second race of the season. Um, as I said earlier on in the episode, after a very roller coaster ride from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows to back to the highest of highs. We now kick off officially with what people say is when the season officially begins with the first mile and a half at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Now, you already had some interesting storylines coming into this race. First of all, with Toyota. Three of the Toyota drivers had to start at the back end of the field. Then the number 11 car, Denny Hammond, the Daytona 500 winner, Kyle Busch, and the 95 car of Christopher Bell. Do, I believe with uh, Kyle Busch with, was unapproved uh, body modifications. I think that's what was with all three cars, but I'm not sure. But I do know it was either the 11 or the 18 that had unapproved body adjustments. So that was it for the drivers that had to start at the rear of the field. And it was very odd because this race reminded me or brought me back to like 2007. I didn't wasn't watching NASCAR at the time, but it was weird because Toyota as a whole was struggling and Chevrolet and Ford basically dominated the race. And early on, it looked like Chevrolet was just going to take it to the bank. Now, stage one, it was Harvick and Logano that were out front. Now, Harvick had the lead at first for the first few or so laps, and then it started to fall back. And this is going to be a trend throughout the entire race. Harvick, he's going to get the lead, but because this car was set up for the short runs, even after five or so laps, Harvick would just fall back. Uh, the car would just not handle right. He's, I didn't believe he sent him like the front tires were just gone after five or so laps, which just killed his car. And Logano and Blaney, as well as Truex, were there to pound. So it was between these three drivers or so that were out from for majority of the first stage. Uh, Truex was the only Toyota driver that was somewhat competitive uh, early on this race. As I said, Hamlin, uh, Bush, Jones, those drivers were just not good. Kyle Bush was the second best, but Hamlin and Jones were just awful in this race today and as i said chevrolet drivers also showed some muscle here in this race specifically with hendrick motorsports you had drivers like william byron who was up in the mix not for the race lead necessarily but in the top four top five or at least was within reach of the race lead you had jimmy johnson who after this the competition caution which was there due to rain he started back in 18th and made his way all the way up to the ninth spot after stage one you had alex bowman there just sitting nicely in the top 10 for majority if not all of the race and then you had Chase Elliott. Elliott started fifth after that competition caution and just drove through the field. Got by Logano, got by Blaney, got by Harvick, and got by those drivers to then take the lead from Harvick, I believe, or Elliott or uh, Logano, I'm not sure, with around nine or so laps to go. And Elliott will go on to win stage one. Now, throughout that time, again, that whole stage, it wasn't, nothing necessarily was very eye popping. It just had very good battles. You saw a lot of battles between the Team Penske drivers of Blaney, Keselowski, and uh, Logano. Those drivers, for some reason, were just next to each other, just bounce up position the whole entire stage. They also had the Hendrick drivers, more, more uh, specifically with Byron, Bowman, and Johnson. They're around the sixth to eighth spot, while the Penske drivers were around the third to fifth spot. Sometimes even first to third at one point, I believe. Uh, so it was again, it wasn't anything eye popping. It was just good racing. I think it's just because there were short runs, or at least a good amount of short runs in this race. Um, the dri uh, cars were close together, obviously with the restarts, they were just phenomenal. Four wide racing, three wide racing, you're going to see that a lot with this package later on into the season. And uh, yeah, and this whole race as a whole, the race as a whole was nothing eye-popping until the end of stage three. We're going to get to that a bit later on. Again, the phrase of nothing eye-popping but good racing continue on into stage two. Again, outside of the restarts, which had some pretty good moves like uh, Harvick, I believe, at the at the start of the uh, stage two. He made like a three-wide pass on Chase Elliott and Martrix Jr. to hold the lead for just a short amount of time before the nine-car Chase Elliott took the lead right back. And then you had this awesome moment on boy Bubba Wallace, who uh, you see the 95-car Chris Rebell in front of him. Makes contact, or just about makes contact with the 95 car. He should have spun that car out, but somehow manages to save it. It was an incredible save uh, by Christopher Bell. He is a wheelman for sure. Pit stops just came in around stage two, around halfway point, and it just continued on with the bad day for Denny Hamlin. Uh, during stage one, he only picked up 10 spawns, moved from 34 to then 24th. Stage two, Another break in front of him. Coming in for pit stops, he and Jimmy Johnson nearly collided, both stopped, and it was like a, no, you go, no, no, you go, type of situation, which halted Hamlin's progress even more. And then you saw some interesting pit strategy, mainly with the 47 car of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Brian Patty. Brian Patty was just, for he was just, had one mindset, to keep Ricky Stenhouse out on pit road for as long as possible. Whenever there was a pit stop, a green flag pit stop, 
Stenhouse would be one of those drivers to stay out as long as possible. Did not work in this scenario, or in this pit stop cycle in Stage 2, but it will work later on. Uh, stage 2 would ultimately then end with a 95 car for Christopher Bell. Uh, I believe cutting a tire, I think, outside of turn number 2, spinning and hitting a wall, uh, causing Stage 2 to end under yellow, with once again Chase Elliott winning that stage. Stage 3 is when things got interesting. It already started off nearly with the wreck, with the 12 car and the 22 car. They were pushing each other right as soon as the green flag dropped. Pushed each other so hard that I believe the 22 car nearly took out the 12 entering one, which could have been a catastrophe there. And then you had the top seven, three Fords of the 22, the 12, and the four car, first, second, and third, I believe. And then you had all four Hendrick drivers behind from fourth to seventh. It was really cool, but again, very interesting battle because at that time, there were no Toyota drivers in like the top 13 or 14. It was very, very weird. Uh, Truex, he had to start at the back because he didn't get all of his lug nuts tightened. And that would just lead to a uh, worse moment. On lap 178, he would hit the wall after cutting a tire, and that would bring out another caution. So Toyota as a whole was just not on point. They were just completely off with all four of their drivers uh, today here at Vegas. The trend continued with Harvick getting a lead at first, but then after a bit, starts to fall back. The 12 car would pass Harvick then for the lead, and then the 9 would then pass Blaney. And that is when everything changed. 47 laps ago, during pit stops, Chase Elliott, right behind Joe Logano, entering turn one, cuts a tire and smacks the outside wall in turn one to bring out the caution, and that would ultimately end Chase Elliott's day. Led 69 or so laps, I believe. Uh, he clearly, he had the best car. If there was anyone that was going to challenge Harvick or Logano, who were one of, if not the best cars in that race today, it was Elliott. And he got taken out after cutting a tire, and that ultimately just said, okay, well, if Ellie can do it, if he's not able to compete, well then who's going to step up to the plate? Well, it came from a very unlikely source that we're going to get to a bit later on in the race when Akasha came out, which is a few laps remaining, which changed everything. So when that Akasha came out with 47 laps to go, the top three were Ricky Stenhouse. Again, we talked about him. He stayed out to hope for a caution. He got that. Second place was a teammate Ryan Priest in the 37, and third was John Hunter Nemechek. That was supposed to be the top three entering the restart, but at, during commercial break, the 37 car Ryan Priest had to go to the garage, which I believe which was an engine problem. So of course, when the restart came out, the, your usual leaders of Harvick and Lagan just blew by uh, the 47 car Ricky Stenhouse, who was able though to hang on to around the top five, top six. The 38 car John Nemechek was able to hang around to like the top 10, top 12, I believe. The 22 car was a race leader, but the four car Kevin Harvick for quite some time was just all over his back bumper. He wasn't able to pass him, but he was just all over. And the reason why was because we talked about that short run speed. Harvick does not have long run speed. Not even for maybe more than six laps, his car just falls up. So he had to get by Logano as fast as he could and build up a lead as fast as he could in order to sort of have somewhat of a cushion for when his car does fall off. He eventually did not get past Logano and he would eventually fall a bit back. New contender to the blitz would be the 12 car Ryan Blaney. He would pass Harvick and then would pass Joey Logano with just a handful of laps to go. But Blaney was not out of the woods just yet. Coming fast was the 88 car of Alex Bowman. He was the fastest car on the racetrack. He managed to pass Joey Logano as well as Kevin Harvick to get up to second place and it was just seven to eight tenths behind uh, Ryan Blaney with just eight laps to go and he was coming. He was the fastest car on the racetrack. He was gonna shave off a tenth or two every lap had this not happened. A caution would come out with six laps to go. Ross Chastain spins on the back straightaway who was filling in uh, for the injured Ryan Newman. He brings out a caution with six to go and that is when we saw a very questionable move or at least what we thought was a very questionable move. We saw drivers like Blaney, I believe Harvick, I think Johnson as well, those drivers pitted while Byron and Logano, they stayed out on old, old tires, as well as the Benedetto, and I believe also Ricky Stenhouse. So it was a very questionable move at first because we thought Harvick, specifically with that short run speed, or Blaney was just gonna destroy Logano and the leaders up front. But, no actually. <laughs> when the racer came out with two laps to go, not a NASCAR overtime, the 21 car of Matt Benedetto forced his way underneath the 24 car of William Byron to take, I think it was second or third place at the time. That cut the left rear tire of William Byron, or at least it started uh, the cutting of William Byron's left rear tire. And then on the back straightaway, Jimmy Johnson, who I believe was ninth at the time, made a five wide pass underneath Tyler Reddick to then jump up to fifth. I mean, it was a 
very ballsy move because Johnson was way below the apron, nowhere near the white line. I thought he was gonna get wrecked. He, either he was gonna wreck Reddick or he was gonna wreck himself, but he managed to make it work. And then when the Wi-Fi came out, everything just everything just lost it. Uh, a bunch of drivers were smoking, the 24 car was smoking, I think the 38 car was smoking, he hit the wall and spun in the middle of the field on the front straightaway and that would bring out the caution and that would ultimately seal the race because the caution came out after the leader took the white flag. Who was the leader? Well, it was Joey Logano. Uh, him and Paul Wolf, that move that a lot of us thought was very ballsy and I or very ballsy and I can even say kind of stupid with taking 21 uh, uh, lap tires against fresh tires he manages to hold on and win his first race of the season at Las Vegas take a look now at the rest of the top 10 second place was Matt Benedetto. third was Ricky Stenhouse Jr. fourth was Austin Dillon fifth was Jimmy Johnson sixth Bubba Wallace nice run for him seventh is Brad Kozlowski eighth is Kevin Harvick ninth is Kyle Larson and rounding up the field is Ty Dillon now you, you see the drivers like the Benedetto Stenhouse Dillon uh, Wallace uh, and Dylan, those drivers stayed out. I believe Johnson and Harvick were the highest drivers to pit, 8th and ninth, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, that was a very interesting top 10. And uh, if you want my scale on what I thought of the race, it was pretty good. I actually did enjoy the race. It flew by quite fast. Uh, the racing was good. Again, nothing eye-popping. Again, I, I can't stress this enough. It wasn't eye-popping. Nothing. It was just good racing. Nothing, you know, nothing was bad, nothing was fantastic, it was just good racing. Uh, I really enjoyed the broadcast with Mike Joint and Jeff Gordon. I was very interested to see how would that dynamic would work without uh, DW. And I think it's going to work pretty well. I enjoyed uh, uh, Mike Joy's and Jeff Gordon's chemistry. You also saw during that race, or heard during that race, that Jeff Gordon, he had much of a bigger role. You saw, uh, heard, I, can't, I keep on saying saw, I mean heard a lot more of Jeff Gordon and his input on what the driver might feel. Really did enjoy that, enjoyed the broadcast, enjoyed the race as a whole, and uh, yeah. Again, no, it was just a solid race, 8 out of 10. It was a solid race, nothing big, nothing out of the ordinary, just a solid race. But it was very good for Vegas standards because uh, last year's Vegas was eh, not that exciting. The year before that was god awful. And I'm talking about the spring race and I'm talking about the fall races. So um, yeah, I'm very interested to see what the season held for. So yeah, now I'm very interested to see what the season holds for the 2020 NASCAR Cup Series. Is Toyota's uh, is their dominance coming to an end? Uh, we're going to see more of what we saw at Vegas with Toyota Struggle. Are we going to see more of Ford and maybe even Chevrolet with Hendrick Motorsports and that new Camaro ZL11LE? Are we going to see that shine even more on the 2.0 mile bank track of Fontana and Auto Club Speedway? Uh, that's going to be very interesting to find out. Again, that's next and I think at the same time, 3, 3.30 on Fox. So very excited to see what that race holds for us. But tell me, what do you guys think? Uh, what did you guys thought of the race in the comment section down below? Tell me all about it. I'd like to hear you guys' thoughts because I see a lot of drivers love it, or fans love it, and I see some people not love it. So, very interested to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, that's good enough for me. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Jake Ross from NASCAR on MDK. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you guys in the next video.